and I Zoo's home safari. We are at Lemur Lookout today with five of our ring-tailed lemurs. My name is Ashley, I'm the head keeper of primates, and this is Liz, one of our excellent lemur keepers we have here. So we're just going to talk to you a little bit about the ring-tailed. Uh, so they are, of course, lemurs. Lemurs are only found on the island of Madagascar. Madagascar is located off the east coast of Africa, and it has a huge variation of environments for these guys to live in. Lemurs have been on the island from 40 to 60 million years, so they've had a lot of time to evolve and to fill all these different niches. So what a lot of people don't realize is that there's over 100 species of lemurs. So you're just seeing one species here. And they range greatly in size, coloration, characteristics. So these guys are about five to seven pounds, these ringtail lemurs. These guys spend most, or not most of their time, they spend the most time on the ground compared to other lemurs, about 30% of the time. They are also diurnal, which means they're awake during the day. There are some lemurs that are nocturnal, like the mass lemur, which is also the smallest lemur, weighs about 30 grams is all. The largest lemurs alive today are called the Indries and weigh to about 20 to 25 pounds. Now, unfortunately, a lot of lemurs have gone extinct over the years. They used to range even greater in size. Um, one species of lemur was actually the size of a gorilla. The good news is, if you come, to, when you come, are able to come to the Cincinnati Zoo, you can see a variation of lemurs. We have several different types of species, so you can really compare and contrast and see how their characteristics really help fill that niche of their environment that they live in. So the ring-tailed lem lemurs live in the southern drier parts of Madagascar. Um, we have Shafakas down at Jungle Trails that live in the coastal forest, and they spend more time up in the trees. But on the rare occasion that they are coming down on the ground, they do a bipedal hop. So they're really upright and they're just using their back legs to hop around. As you see the ringtail lemurs, they're on all fours as they're moving around the ground. So another type of lemur at Jungle Trails is called the eye eye. This is the largest nocturnal primate and the most specialized lemur. It's unfortunately not the cutest thing, um, but it does have a elongated middle finger large ears, large eyes, and big teeth. So it uses this elongated finger to tap on the bark of trees. And with those large ears, they're able to listen to vibrations within the bark, and they're able to locate grubs and bugs this way. So with those big teeth and long finger, they can pull those out for a nice snack. So lemurs are a type of primate. They're a type of primate called prosimian. And what that means is they have very similar characteristics to what primates uh, would have had 40 to 60 million years ago. So they do have a longer nose. They also have a wet nose, like you see dogs having. And so they do rely on their sense of smell more than other primates. And ring-tailed lemurs in particular have scent glands on their chest, underneath their tail, and on their wrist. So they do a lot of scent marking on trees and that sort of thing. If I see any of them do it, I'll make sure to point it out for you guys. Another characteristic of being a prosim prosimian, they do have smaller brain size compared to monkeys or apes. And although it looks like they have opposable thumbs, they do not have a true opposable thumb. That ball joint is fixed. So it's a little bit harder for them to pick up small items and manipulate things. For example, like a gorilla can really easily do that. These guys, as you can see a little bit earlier on, they're hopping around a little bit more. These guys are great vertical clingers and leapers. So what that means, they can leap really easily from tree to tree, kind of in an upright position. And they're able to do that because of their long hind legs. So like I said, we have five ring-tailed lemurs out here, and Liz is gonna to talk to you a little bit more specifically about the individuals you see and their social dynamics. So I can uh, try to help point a little feature for these guys out. Let's see, we have Izzy. She is the dominant female of this group. Uh, she kind of just jumped up on that rock. Um, she's kind of resting her hand there on that vine. Uh, let's see, we have Ivan. He is the adult male of this group. He is 16. Um, he is kind of right there in that wood wool, right? right kind of behind uh, all that greenery. And we have Willow. She is eight years old. Uh, she is right here in that greenery. Um, and then we have Benny and Jerry. Uh, those are the two twin boys of this group. That is Izzy and Ivan's uh, sons. Um, it, it isn't super rare for these guys to have twins. Sometimes this food is plentiful um, like it is at zoos. Um, they're able to have twins. Uh, so these guys will be three in July. Let me see if I can them out a little better. They're kind of hiding in the back. 
Um, Benny uh, is kind of playing with that little enrichment piece over there with that wood wool in it. And I think Jerry is just right behind him. Um, and those boys will be three. Um, these guys live to be around 16 or so uh, years old, um, even longer in the zoos. Um, and like I said before, Izzy is the dominant female. Um, in this group, it's the females rule. Um, and the boys kind of hang out in the outskirts. Um, the females will definitely spend all their time with their um, natal group, the group they were born in, and then the males might drift off. Um, yeah. Ready for some questions? Yeah, I think so. Yeah, everything. Josh wants to know how high can they jump? So that's a great question, Josh. Um, these guys are, like I said, extremely great leapers. It's not necessarily how high, but they can do a great horizontal leaping. Um, so it's said that they could leap anywhere from 20 to 30 feet, believe it or not. So they're really specialized to be able to leap well. Amelia wants to know if they're endangered. These guys are considered to be endangered um, and that is mostly due to habitat loss, uh, bushmeat, and a big thing is pet trade. Um, a lot of people think these guys make great pets, uh, which is definitely the opposite. Um, they are you know, really hard to take care of and it's better for them to um, be with their own kind and um, be taken care of the right way. They, um, yeah, they can get extremely aggressive yep. and unfortunately, these guys are considered the most endangered mammal in the world right now. So it's extremely important to protect them in the wild since their forests are decreasing so rapidly. Emma wants to know what sounds do they make? Gosh. So these guys make anywhere from 15 to 20 sounds. So they are constantly communicating with each other. Um, they have alarm calls. So if they see a large bird in the sky, this can be a predator for them. So they may all be um, alarm calling towards that bird. They also communicate quite a bit towards each other. I'm horrible at trying to mimicking <laughs> these vocalizations, so I won't do that for you. Um, but they also communicate using those striped tails. So it's not just with vocalizations. Now these guys are extremely distinguishable because of the striped tail. And you can see we had one of our lemurs scent marking there. Um, but these guys, like I said, spend a lot of time on the ground. And as they travel on the ground, you can see their tails naturally floating upwards. And so lots of times they're traveling through tall grasses and those tails kind of act as a flagging system for their troop. The males also get in what's called stink fighting. They'll take that long striped tail over their head, rub the scent glands from their wrists onto their tail, and then they'll flick that stinky tail in front of another male's face. And as far as we know, whoever has the stinkiest tail at the end wins the girlfriend's heart over. Erica wants to know, does the way they hold their tail tell you how they're feeling similar to a cat? So that's a good question. So a lot of people compare these guys to cats. Uh, they're actually, the species name is called lemur cata because they are very similar to that. But I don't want them to sound like they are so similar to cats because they're not. They are primates. Um, they do, like I said, communicate differently um, with their tails. They also use their tails for balance and that sort of thing. So like I said, they'll be flicking each other um, kind of in the face with their tail during breeding season and that sort of thing. Um, but these guys can be really aggressive, so definitely not like cats in that way. <laughs> Aubrey wants to know if they can swim. Uh, no, these guys don't swim. Uh, hence, like we have a moat, kind of a, a barrier. These guys do not enjoy getting in the water. Maeve wants to know, do they have a long tongue? <laughs> Um, the question was, do they have a long tongue? Um, they have a long enough tongue to fill their long nose, I guess. I don't know the exact length of it. Um, but you can see they're kind of looking at their bamboo and in other enrichment that we have out here. So we have different puzzle feeders. Um, we have a portion of their diet out here. Uh, we gave them a little bit of honey and there's some wood wool as well. Uh, we saw them scent marking the wood wool earlier, but they're all kind of eating at the bamboo right now. Christopher asks, what do they eat? Um, these guys eat a lot of different things. They're kind of oppor opportunistic. <laughs> Sorry, it took me to get out. Um, so, you know, they might rarely catch a bird or like, a, you know, a little uh, lizard or something like that. But mostly these guys will just eat, um, you know, leaves, uh, bark, uh, sap, flowers, and things like that, fruits. Carson wants to know, would these make good pets? That's an excellent question. They will absolutely not make good pets. So just like any other primate, they are horrible for pets. So they can get extremely aggressive. Primates need other primates of their own kind, um, and we're not able to fulfill that. So that can get them very aggressive. And lemurs in particular, um, they have a very 
strict hierarchy. So it's really, they really strive to have that hierarchy and it's just something that people cannot um, do for them. So it's really a horrible idea. Plus these guys can get very dirty and they also pass diseases and sicknesses as well. Nora and Connor want to know, can they hang from the trees from their tail? Um, no, they can't really hang. Um, they mostly just use it, you know, like we said, to help keep each other together um, and for those stink bites, but no, they couldn't actually hang. Michael wants to know, do they have predators in the wild? Yeah, so they have um, some natural predators. So they have big hawks and dogs. Fusa is a predator for these guys as well. But unfortunately, like most animals, humans are their largest predator. Like Liz had said before, because of deforestation, they'll actually even hunt these guys for food. And like I said, take them out of the wild and sell them as pets as well. Madison's wondering if they ever fight. Um, just like, you know, all of our other primates, uh, you know, just like you and your family. Yeah, sometimes, you know, uh, there might be a little tip here and there, um, but they're always able to work it out and uh, figure out that hierarchy. Um, but there's, um, you know, never anything too bad that comes along, I don't think. Giovanni wants to know if they're active in the day or the night. That's a good question. So these lemurs are mostly active during the day. Um, however, all lemurs do have a, ref a layer of reflective cells behind the retina of their eye, like cats do. Sometimes you'll see your cat at home have a glowing eye, and that's actually to help them see better at nighttime. So this is a characteristic that all lemurs have, um, but not necessarily all lemurs are nocturnal. But we do, like the eye eye, like I talked about before, is nocturnal, and the mouse lemur is as well. Zach asked, what is their favorite enrichment? Um, I think they really like honey. Um, the fact that we smeared it over um, some things, they really like that. They also really enjoy bamboo or any kind of, I know they have browse on the island. Uh, browse is any kind of, you know, plants or trees that we put down here for them, but they really like when we like put it on the island ourselves and they will set mark that up. Emily asked, do these animals, are they bred with a species survival plan? I think so, can you explain what that is? Yes, that's a great question. So they are bred with a species survival plan. So this is basically a group of people that help manage all the ringtail lemurs across U.S. zoos. So they're kind of the matchmakers of lemurs. They decide which lemurs should breed with who. That way we don't get any genetic, any genetics too closely related and that sort of thing. The good news about the ringtails is that they've had an extremely successful breeding um, in zoos. So um, we're actually not breeding ringtail lemurs as much. And that's honestly a good thing because we want to keep our population um, nice and healthy because in the wild, like I said, they're um, decreasing very rapidly. Jasper wants to know how long is their gestation period? It, um, sorry, it's four months. And Trace asks, how long can they live? Yeah, so they can live anywhere from 16 to 17 years old. In zoos, they can live a little bit longer because they do have access to health care that um, animals in the wild wouldn't necessarily have. And our last question is from Hannah. She wants to know, do they have different personalities? Yeah, just like all of us, uh, these guys have different personalities. Um, some are more relaxed and um, some are obviously more uptight. Um, the boys tend to be a little more relaxed uh, than the females do in the group. So don't forget to click on the link to see the activity that we have for today. Um, I believe it's a ringtail lead or ringtail is involved in the activity so please check it out we would love to see what you guys come up with and see how creative you are thank you so much for listening and have a great day guys